So friends, we made it to Kalamazoo, Michigan. I remembered the Gibson guitar plant being here. Carl Perkins' son Stan told me a story of his dad coming here and picking up an Epiphone. We're going to dig into that and the plant. Stay tuned. So friends, if you had a Gibson guitar made before the 80s, it most likely came from this plant right here. And it looks like they're trying to save the smokestack or either take it down instead of imploding it and maybe move it somewhere else. I see scaffolding back there. But this was the original Gibson Guitar Factory. Look at the door. And look right there at the door. Now there's word that Elvis came here, which we do not believe. But I do believe some other greats like Johnny Cash, Carl Perkins, B.B. King, B.B. King, Charles, Charles Charlie Daniels. Daniels. B. B. Um, a lot of the fellas came here. You see how they're working on the smokestack back there? CZ Top. Yep, let's get out. Which yeah, will be worth getting out. Billy Gibbons. This was, in fact, the original Gibson Guitar Factory. How many great ones walked through this front door? Don't you look at that. Now that is cool. They did their own woodwork. So the trains would have come in, offloaded the wood, and we'll ride around to the back. I may even send the glory up. It's like it's still a working place, a working plant, some of it. But a lot of great guitars came right through here. Yes, indeed they did. Les Paul was built right here, the one that Carl Perkins wrote Blue Suede Shoes on, 1953. Yeah. Elvis's J200. Elvis's J200s. They run. You gotta love that. This is on Parsons Street. And the address is 225, this is on Scudder and Parsons, 225. Gibson right there, look at that. So this is a cool lineup, look at this. This is all the, some Gibson employees and they're right here. Now the window there has been changed, you see? The, the little building that was right here, you can still see concrete right there, it's gone. But the door has been modified a little bit. The Gibson ink is gone. That happened right there. Check that out. So friends, we're on this side. I think I hear a train coming and I'm not being funny. I hear that train a coming. There's a rolling around the bend and I ain't seen the sunshine, but I don't see one on this track. So I think we're okay. So this is a photo of Les Paul here. You see the Les Paul guitar and you see those windows in the back and you can see that. Look at these windows here. I don't know if it was the first floor, but that looks like those windows. You can even see these pylons in between. Let me show you, see them in between. So this thing had three floors. You can see there's one that's kind of sunk down in, and then there's one up there. The middle one, it looks like the windows were different, but down there it didn't. So they changed them over the years. This could have been on any one of those three floors, but that is where Les Paul was produced right there with Les Paul in that building right there. And then here's another building or another photo. And that is guys in there working building. And you see those same windows. So pretty darn cool stuff, I must say. When I'm standing on the train tracks and I'm here train blowing, it's a little unnerving. Amtrak. Not a very 
long train. Hey, everybody. They need to wash the train. Can we get a train wash, please? Real All right, deal. let me show you this. Oh, no. Let me go to this guitar. This was the one that he was using with Johnny Cash in the mid to late 60s. This is the guitar that was on Folsom Prison, live at San Quentin. Wow, okay. It even says the Johnny Cash soul That's on the right. back of it. Uh-huh. This was a... This was a guitar... When Johnny Cash recorded Boy Named Sue, it wasn't a song. It was a poem written by Shel Silverstein. Mm -hmm. John had it, and it was on paper. And he wanted to do it for those prisoners simply because what it said, and that I'm the SOB that named you Sue. Mm -hmm. He didn't have a melody. There was no melody because it wasn't a song. Mm -hmm. And he turns to my dad, and he says, Carl, just start playing something. I'm going to do this. Well, you, if you if you remember in your head the, uh, how that song starts off, well, my daddy left home when I was three. He didn't leave much. It's more like a recitation mm -hmm. than, a, than, a, than a song. And then you hear that guitar. That was my dad playing this guitar. Wow. Yeah. Hold it. Epiphone. Yep. Hollow body. Smell the A. So this is a like a 335. Right. It's called the Emperor. It's the Emperor of Emperor. Uh-huh. Can you smell the age of I do. That's the same strings that were on it and quit playing it in 1969, 50 years ago. Wow. It's still in, in pretty good pretty tune. Pretty good tune. Mm -hmm. Good guitar stay in tune. Mm -hmm. That was the, that was the little thing that come with it. When he went to, I think they were making those guitars in Michigan somewhere. Dude, Billy, you play good. Played so long with a tuner. I know. I can't tune. I know. I've done the same thing. I, I, well, my ears are just not what they used to be. And it seems if you don't get it, if you like me, if you don't get it right in first while trying to tune it, the further away you get from it, the longer it takes to fool with it. You know. Now that's some history right there with that guitar. Man, this is really cool. So when I listen to the Folsom Prison... That's it. This is the guitar. That's the guitar. This is the guitar. That's insane. That's the guitar on Live at San Quentin. Um, Boy Named Sue. Wow. Daddy Sang Bass. That was the guitar he was playing when he wrote Daddy Sang Bass. He wrote Daddy Sing Bass on this guitar. In the dressing room. <laughs> Can you believe that? On this guitar. It's got a Bixby. Yep. Three pickups. Three-way switch, not a two-way. That's right. So I'm assuming the switch is front, back, or middle of some right. blend. Right. Very cool. Is that not cool? Man, that is ultra cool. Now Plus. that is a old age smell that smells good. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's if it didn't smell like that, it ain't the real thing. So friends, that Emperor, 62 model Epiphone Emperor, 
very rare guitar on its own. They only made six of them in 1962. And also this 53 model Les Paul was made in this same factory. Both Carl Perkins guitars. I have both of these guitars for sale. So if you're interested, I got these two Gibsons, a Gibson and Epiphone made at the Gibson plant, Kalamazoo, Michigan. Man, we'll finish up. So this is the, you. this is the, uh, this is, and I'm the creme you. de la creme. Yeah. Let me get over here. This, this guitar is like an anchor. It's so heavy. Um, 53, did you say? This was a 53 Les Paul. This was the first good guitar that he ever had. He got it here in Jackson and paid five dollars a week. He didn't have the money to buy it. Now he wrote blue suede shoes at two o'clock one morning in a government project house with this guitar. Matchbox, Honey Dome, all of them were played on this guitar right here. Glad All Over, all of the Sun Records, he, play, he always uses this guitar here on it. Now it was gold top, that was factory finishing, mm -hmm. the only way you could get it in 53. It did not have the, the Bigsby terminal, Bigsby or nothing like that on it. He put that on it, had it painted blue. My brother got a hold of it. But let me tell you what happened to this guitar before I get to my brother doing what he did to it. This guitar got away from him. He let somebody borrow it, and it got away from him. Now, he had a cousin who was a successful man. He was a good, I see his face right now. He was a good man, sweet man, who dearly loved him. He was his first cousin. And he said, Carl, he said, you, we've got to find that guitar. He said, I'm going to find that guitar, whatever it takes. I'm going to trace it down wherever it's at. Now, he went, and it took him, I know, at least a year. But one day he came in, and he had the guitar. Now, before he went hunting, he asked Daddy, he said, now, is there any telltale signs, anything that you did to the guitar that would make me know that if I find it, is that that's the guitar? He said, no, I can't think of anything. Back in those days, they put when they put the serial number on the guitar, they just put a stamp on it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't engraved in the guitar. It was like an ink stamp. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. He says, no. He said, well, there's one thing I did do. And he said, okay, give me, tell me what you did. He said, well, I did put a belt buckle on it once. He said, a belt buckle? He said, yeah. He said, why, do, why would you put a... He said, well, it was shiny and chrome. I thought it looked good, and I put it on there. He said, where did you put it on? He said... Where the jack fits in the guitar. He said, okay. He traces it. He finds, he goes into a pawn shop in Alabama. And he says, I get a funny feeling when I walk in. I said, there is a Les Paul hanging on the wall. He goes up and he takes it off the wall and he turns it over. And I want you to look. Now, there's the belt buckle. And he's right, that does look cool. All right. But I'm going to show you something this belt buckle is, can tell you that, that you're not seeing right now. Okay. And once, once I tell you, you're going to see. You know how poor man he was? Hmm. Four different screws. Yeah, four different screw heads. There's a, there's a Phillips and a small Phillips and two flats. <laughs> he didn't have four screws at max. Now that's poor. That's poor. But that was what he put on there. That's incredible.
So if you want to support this effort, make sure that you subscribe, like, and then join. That helps us to get more videos out there. Yes, it does.